Well, welcome. Thank you for joining our session this afternoon. I'm Sherry. He's Joel, just in case anybody was confused. Um, <laughs> true story. Uh, I met Joel on a beach in Rio de Janeiro. And I'll <laughs> tell you a little bit more about that later because it's not nearly as exciting as it sounds. Um, so as the president of Spark Center, we are the uh, lead in the Durham RTDF. Um, and we're here today to really talk to you about electrification and why, you know, truly electrification as a technology advancement really doesn't matter because there is so much more at stake. And one of the things that we are doing, uh, I like to think, in Ontario, Canada, is really advancing uh, the manner in which we are bringing these technologies to bear. So the question, uh, or maybe the approach we would like to take with you today, is rather than just kind of talk at you, which I know is um, always a, a challenge at these conferences because there's not a lot of time, but please um, feel free at any time during the presentation to put your hand up and ask questions. We're very interested in having more of a dialogue with you today than just a speak out at you. So, Joel, I'm going to hand off to you. I'll give you the controls, my friend. All right, so good afternoon, right? Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and we are going to cover, uh, you know, what really matters uh, for the above and beyond technology per se, right? And how do we believe we can approach what matters question and then show how we are working and doing in the past four to five years in Ontario and for another three years ahead, right? So in terms of what matters, I think that the first question that really drove us to think what to do in the next three years in Durham RTDS is uh, sustainability, right? So technology is important, but sustainability as a human species is something that's calling our attention every day. So is it a choice, like the quote from Camus, or is it a trade-off matter, right? So it's about choosing internal combustion engines and uh, electric cars, or is it about, you know, by adopting electric cars, you need to get into taxation uh, to accelerate the pace? Is a trade-off that we have? Or is it about perspective, right? Because you don't know what you don't know. You only can see past uh, the choices that you comprehend, right? So when thinking about those things, trying to, to get you towards the mindset that we digested over the course of the four years that we have been working in Ontario on this, uh, we kind of thought to slice down between what is what was the past, what is now, and what's the future? And uh, there is a space in the world and in people, really, right? About uh, who is in the change space, who is in the workspace, and who is in the seize space. And there is nothing wrong about it. It's just a matter of interest. It's just a matter of perspective. But this drives what you can comprehend, because you are in a given space, and obviously, you comprehend what's in nearby your space, right? So you have all sorts of people. The idea here is to just convey that we here probably are most likely around the disruption zone, right? We are interested in constructing a future, on paving new things that still don't exist. So possibly there's a likelihood of people around here to be people that need to believe to see instead of see to believe. Is that right? Okay? Awesome. So, but analyzing this question of past, present, and future, and the disruption space, what really drives us towards the question on what matters most, uh, just for the, the technology itself, is that, you know, as we look at this space over time, but in the time dimension on it, what we get or what we take is that the gap between the present and the future is shrinking, right, over time, and is accelerating. 
in the past or reading some spots in, over the world. It's a matter of pulling people and pulling technology towards what you believe to be a proper direction in terms of technology. But right now, in 2022, I think that most people recognize a kind of a crushing sensation that the train of future is almost trampling us, right? Because you cannot keep, keep up with the pace of many things that are happening, right? So as the gap shrinks, because in the 80s we had like Moore's law applied to microprocessors, right? The speed in which processing power and consumption costs were evolving. And right now, what was once one exponential law that was kind of governing our pace towards future, right now we have many. We have AI, we have electrification, we have robotics, quantum, nuclear fusion, many things that are right now a commercial stage, other things that are at the verge of converting to that, uh, but all of those things are kind of pushing us. So uh, with those things in mind, what really drove us to think about the title of this presentation and this provocation to you guys is that for us, what really matters is adoption. Because adoption is kind of this tesseract. It's kind of this summary of many dimensions in the space time that allow us to gather around together people. And people matters, right? Sustainability matters. And the balance and not the extremes matter. So with that, uh, to the title of our presentation and to move to the next block, what we want to leave you guys with is that to us, technology matters a lot. Uh, to do business development obviously matters a lot because all of us are material beings. We need to eat, we need to travel, we need to have leisure, right? But those things only matter if we secure that because if we don't do that, the train of evolution or the fierce mere, mere uh, opposition in the business arena can just, you know, take us not just off the business, but take us off the planet, take us off the life, right? So that's what matters for us. So far so good? Make sense? So trying to then, uh, before we, we put to you, how we are trying to do this in our humble and just working way, uh, you know, to slice and dice and break down how can we approach adoption, right? Uh, we kind of thought in a very simple way of putting, laying off things, which is what's the what dimension of adoption, how we are going to do it, uh, who is going to join, and when you're going to do it, right? And basically, uh, we have many different tones in the in-between, right? But we can try to kind of reduce that for the sake of a, a common understanding between amongst ourselves, right? Uh, that you can have like two extremes. So in one extreme, you have a life, an economy that's carbon positive, right? Doesn't really care. And on the other side, uh, sorry, it really cares about things. And the other side, we have carbon uh, for the bad side, that's fossil fuel and etc. When we look at, uh, you know, a positive balance of carbon in the equation, uh, we have all sorts of electrification, autonomy, uh, as a service, and closed loop economies that we can bring to the adoption arena, right? And that matters. Uh, when looking at how we can basically believe in one extreme that an industry leader or a visionary will make all those things happen and we can just chill out and drink our drinks or whatever, right? Or we can believe that the best insurance possible towards, you know, securing the future, not just for us, but for our kids, for our grandkids, so that we do not get ashamed of talking to them, is joint collaboration right now. It's about working together, right? That's the second way. And in terms of who, uh, we can have an approach in which innovation is driven by this miraculous uh, industry that sees it all and gets it all, right? Or we can have 
a very positive collaboration in which municipality is working hand in gloves with industry, hands in gloves with established industry that has the stamina, the power, and the muscles to make things happen, and at the same time working with innovators that really see things that right now are not real, are not reality, and have the capacity to streamline those disruptive thoughts into different products and services that right now don't exist, right? And the same thing goes on when. We can just try to slow down the pace of the train so that we can chill out a little bit more, right? Which is uh, not much practical because we cannot cope with the storm, and the storm is coming. So we better prepare ourselves to that, right? So in a, in a nutshell, uh, you know, the, the vision that we have for electrification, and we are trying as much as we can to walk our talk by working every day, putting sweat and blood to this is that, you know, technology can be a unilateral movement based on the hypothesis of a person or a company or a visionary. Or technology can be a matter of adoption and collaboration, where you have all those stakeholders working together, right? And it seems like fluff, but it is not. It's a matter of how you design your work equation, right? And we are trying to do that very hard uh, in Durham, in Ontario, in Canada, and to so that you can really bring the long run in play. So this is kind of the vision, and this is the breakdown. Now, talking about what we are really doing, now that we kind of have a common mind map and cognizant of the time, so we'll kind of uh, accelerate the pace here. Talking about Ontario in Canada and automotive, uh, what's the big picture, right, in a bird's eye view? So Ontario has invested $142 million over the last seven years uh, for a mandate of seven years of automotive electrification and autonomous technology development, right? Uh, and in the last really months, it's not even years, Ontario has secured uh, over seven billion, probably this number is outdated, seven billion dollars of investment from basically Stellantis, one OEM and GM that is in our home city in Oshawa, uh, to basically retool and repurpose the internal combustion engine factories that they had there for decades to accelerate electric vehicle production in, the, in that place. Actually, Ontario is most of the time competing with Michigan in terms of quantity of electric vehicles or vehicles produced, right? Uh, and the government of Canada and the province already put money as well to this pot of $7 billion, right? And just in Oshawa, the home city that we are in the greater Toronto area, uh, this investment for, from GM in this case will translate to like 2,600 jobs in terms of the production line uh, for electric vehicles there, right? So putting in perspective uh, out of Ontario, of Ontario, what is OVEN, the Ontario Vehicle Innovation Network, Right? which is the program towards which we belong. Uh, you know, OCI is a province-funded uh, institution that uh, has the mandate of fostering innovation. They have created seven regional technology development sites, which are basically consortiums between academia, you know, incubator, and uh, post-secondary. Right? So uh, they offer grants, they offer mechanisms for uh, companies to hire uh, high-skilled tech, like AI, students, grads, PhDs, masters, stuff like that. And they, and they provide a lot of re reputation to anyone working with them because they are province-funded, right? Um, Durham RTDS, in particular, is a consortium between those core partners, which you don't know the branding, that's fine, most of the branding you don't know, but the idea here is to really convey to you that the way we are trying to do there is to really have an alliance between industry, core partners that are community players, and other partners that are other sort of established companies or institutional organizations in the space of electrification, autonomous technologies, smart cities, and smart mobility, right? 
and now I will hand over to Sherry. Yeah, so I mean, the big question I think is, uh, I'm sure you guys have been walking around the floor and listened to lots of um, workshops. You know, the thing that is a theme with any disruptive technology is this very human reaction to new disruption, which is this momentum for lag, or what I call the hurry up to go slow. Um, and so what we're trying to do in Ontario, Canada, <laughs> Uh, specifically in Durham, is really bring all those partners together and create a sandbox of real deployment of these technologies and test them. And so we do that through um, a program of challenges. So our municipal partners who have real-time, you know, uh, public transportation challenges, uh, traffic challenges, fleet challenges, put forward the challenges that they're suffering with, and then we do a call out for solutions. And so those uh, call outs go around the world. We are not focused specifically just in Ontario, so we will, and I invite all of you to pay attention to our, our feeds, but we will be um, issuing three technical challenges every year for the next three years, so we'll have nine challenges. We will do an event that kind of kicks off those challenges, and the culmination of those challenges is that the municipalities will partner with a business to bring that solution to the market, to the sandbox known as the Durham RTDS. And all of the people who participated in the challenge but perhaps did not win the challenge will be provided with the supports, uh, access to funding, access to partners that Ontario provides uh, its own um, SMEs and startups. Next slide. Yeah, uh, so this is just to give you an idea, a very quick idea uh, of what this translates into, right? So Durham RTDS is an organization that exists to provide uh, services, programs that Sherry was explaining in the previous slide. And this one is about really the platforms that either established industry companies that want to deploy a technology or test a technology in Canada or want to take under their wings a company from there to test something here in the Emirates, right? Uh, they can leverage basically both the established industry and startups, all sorts of cool platforms uh, like you have a solution on battery and you have a fast charging environment and that's bed ready for you to connect your product so that you can amplify and get to a slick stage faster, right? Same thing goes with simulation, all sorts of platforms. So I'm not going to go over the details, mindful about the time, but that's what you get by partnering or by being a participant of the Durham RTDS, right? and hand over to Sherry. Yeah, so um, you may be curious about you know, how we do this outreach. So Spark Center is a co-working space and incubator within Ontario. Uh, we are uh, not only part of the Ontario Vehicle Innovation Network, but we're also um, you know, a, a much larger incubator that has a very strong emphasis on international uh, SMEs as well as globalization. And so I promised you I would tell you a little bit of story about how I met this guy on a beach. Um, the, here's the story. Uh, we did a soft landing program in 2018 with a group of uh, Brazilian cohorts. I'm guessing you may have gathered by his accent that he's not authentically Canadian, um, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're getting him there. And um, so Joel came to us uh, because we had a call for technology solutions and he got involved because of Oven with the specific application to uh, smart mobility. And uh, as the story goes, um, you know, it's over. He, he joined, he, he got uh, enamored with living in Canada. He joined our, uh, our community within Durham Region. And really he's been, since he landed on the ground, been just achieving over and over and over again. So, you know, some of those uh, things are, you know, he, he came as a solo entrepreneur. He had no employees. Today he has nine technical staff, four of them are in Ontario, four are in Brazil. You know, he works with our academic partners in Eastern Ontario. He's attracted grants and funds. And more importantly, as a startup, he has attracted contracts, business, you know, people who pay him to do his work mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, uh, looking for a handout. Um, so, 
you know, it's a solution that we think is very powerful. Uh, in Ontario, we're very much, um, I guess I would call that experiential. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of philosophy that happens around electrification. I was in a, conf uh, a workshop this morning where we were talking about, you know, governments and, and sort of this overemphasis on infrastructure so it, it pushes everything to slow down. The reality is the only way that we can bring these technologies to bear is to create a sandbox that we can test and prove the technology works and then take it out for scale. And so that's really what we're doing in a nutshell. Next slide, Joel. Uh, well, I think I just said that, so I probably don't need to really talk about it. Um, we really exist in Ontario for the sole purpose of bringing platforms, services, and demonstration sites to the people who work with us within Ontario to prove out electrification and smart mobility. And we'll finish up. If any of you would like to learn more about what we're doing in Ontario and become part of the solutions that we're bringing to bear, I invite you to follow us to um, connect with either Joel or I directly. And I think we're going to wrap up with just a kind of a sexy sizzle reel to kind of show you a little bit about what's going on in Ontario. It's short. Yes, it is. The visual is from our climatic wind tunnel, which is at Ontario Tech University in, uh, in our region. This is the largest autonomous shuttle uh, pilot in North America, the largest track in North America. It was in Durham region, in Canada. Those are some of, of the assets that we have there, various areas. Next video will be with electric vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Um, we welcome any inquiries. If you have any questions, please feel free to put your hand up. Otherwise, uh, we'll hope to hear from you at another time. Thanks, guys.